is Boeing a potential buy now? We're analyzing Boeing stock ticker BA using the select six analysis. We're looking at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Boeing. Then we're giving a rating to the business. This analysis is going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Boeing for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, how has Boeing stock performed? Right now, Boeing trades for $210.65 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 8%. While this is up, this is less than the market. The S&P 500 is up 16.5% year to date. In the last five years, Boeing stock has been crushed. The company had major fallout from its 737 MAX crashes. That includes scandal and ongoing litigation. Boeing also was hit very hard by the pandemic lockdowns and a disruption to aircraft purchases. The company's stock is down more than 40% in the last five years. In the last decade, Boeing's actually compounding at 6% annually. Prior to their crashes and lockdown, they were beating the market by a lot. Going back before the global financial crisis, even though Boeing's down currently, they've actually beat the market over this time. They're compounding at around 8% annually. The company also paid out dividends. Their average dividend yield would be added to any returns in their stock price. Boeing trades $33 below their 52-week high. The company's up $90 from their 52-week low. Just over 1% of their shares are sold short. Boeing is a huge company. They have a $127 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should you pay close attention to Boeing? Boeing is a major aerospace and defense firm. It operates in four segments, commercial airplanes, defense, space, and security, global services, and Boeing Capital. Boeing's commercial airplane segment competes with Airbus in the production of aircraft ranging from 130 seats and upward. Boeing's defense, space, and security segment competes with Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and several other firms to create military aircraft and weaponry. Global services provide aftermarket support to airlines. The Boeing Capital segment offers financial services and leasing operations for aircraft. The company traces its roots to 1916, and not too long ago, it moved its headquarters to Arlington, Virginia. Now let's dive deep into their numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. A typical business earns 7% returns on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the company. Boeing had huge returns on capital prior to their 737 MAX crashes. Since then, they've had negative returns in all of these fiscal years. When this is averaged out, Boeing still actually earns 8.6% returns on capital in a given year, although none of these years had been anywhere near that. Their average hides a lot of this volatility. While averaged out, this is just better than a typical business. This is down from our benchmark. It's an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for this to be a check, and we'll include their numbers up until today, which won't be shown all the way on this chart. In this time, Boeing really took a one-two punch. Their revenues have dropped by 27%. They're not back to where they were prior to the pandemic lockdowns. Their earnings have gone from being positive to they've been negative in their last four years. At the same time, the company's free cash flows are down by more than 42%. A good sign for the business, though, is that their free cash flows were positive for the first time in three years in their most recent fiscal year. They're also positive today. So it looks like the company is starting to turn things around. Still, because two of these three are down, this is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we want to see earnings per share growth. This looks at Boeing from the view of an individual shareholder. We learned in our last metric that their net incomes or their earnings are down over this period. They're actually negative today. Boeing's also diluted shareholders by 2%, meaning their earnings per share are both down and they're negative. This is an X on metric number three. Does Boeing have what it takes to turn it around in the second half of our analysis? Metric number four, we want to see free cash flow per share growth. Their free cash flows have declined by 42%. They've also diluted shareholders. Again, they've had positive free cash flows over the last year and a half. They had negative free cash flows from 2019 until 2021. Still, these free cash flows are down from where they were at in 2018. This is an X on metric number four. We're still looking for our first check. In recessions, it's businesses with a lot of debt that can have the biggest losses or even go bankrupt. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Boeing has significantly increased their net debt position over this time. They had just $5 billion in net debt in 2018. This was up to $43 billion in 2021. 
and $41 billion in 2022. Today, they're at $38.5 billion of net debt. This five-year period includes 2020, where the business consumed nearly $20 billion of cash. In these last five years, when we add up their free cash flows, Boeing consumed $12.5 billion of cash. While they are cash flow positive today, these still wouldn't fully support their debt loads. Either way you cut it here, this is an X on metric number five. Although their free cash flows have rebounded, whether or not they're able to support their debt position depends on a continued increase in their free cash flows. As our bonus, we're looking at Boeing's dividend track record. They cut their dividends in fiscal 2020. Boeing had been growing their dividend for some time coming into this. Warren Buffett made a comment at the 2023 Berkshire shareholder meeting that it's not a great sign when a company cuts its dividends. Boeing did so defensively as the company ended up consuming cash for three years straight. While they have positive free cash flows today, they don't pay out dividends. And as we learned in our last metric, the company has a much higher debt load to contend with today than they did in 2018. Even though it hurts, it's likely a good thing for shareholders based on where their cash flows were at that they cut their dividend like they did. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Boeing's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Boeing. Right now, the company has a $166 billion enterprise value. This accounts for both their net debt position and their market cap. It looks at Boeing similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned they consumed cash in their business, meaning they have a negative average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, they produced $7.8 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. While that's down 42% from where they were at in fiscal 2018, when it's divided by their $166 billion enterprise value, it gives us a 4.7% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield that's actually above the yield from the 10-year treasury, but it's very slightly down from the 5% risk premium we were looking for. This means this is still an X on metric number six. Don't just throw the business out though. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and talk about our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Boeing. This takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Given Boeing's recent history, their predictability is very low. So this is a rough estimate compared to what we're normally looking at for businesses. We're using Boeing's current free cash flows, which are still down from where they were at historically, then using assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these assumptions will be accurate or not for Boeing. Assuming they grow their current free cash flows by 5% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming that these grow at 4% annually, we won't add in their tangible book value, as that's likely skewed by how the accounting's done for their share buybacks, which since the early 2000s they've actually had a lot of. It's also likely to be impacted by some of the company's recent hits, so that's something you want to look at. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, from today's valuation multiples, if these are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Boeing's fair value is around $113 per share. That's down nearly $100 from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. Again, this is a rougher estimate for Boeing based on their free cash flows due to their low predictability. Keep in mind this 15% discount rate would include both any gains in their stock price and if the company would start to pay out dividends again. Most importantly, this analysis isn't financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our rating, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for Boeing's business. Why don't we figure out what they are? SMBC Aviation Capital just ordered 27 Boeing 737 MAX jets for a deal worth $3.7 billion. They're the world's second largest aircraft leasing firm. The new aircraft are scheduled for delivery in 2028 and 2029. The Irish-based leaser is owned by a consortium of Japanese companies, and its fleet of 711 planes currently has 65 MAX aircraft. Despite the poor safety track record, Boeing is starting to see orders come in again as more and more companies are considering the 737 MAX as Boeing seems to have resolved their safety concerns. They did note that deliveries decreased as they're wrestling with more manufacturing defects. Looking at the factors supporting a long thesis, number one, Boeing has a large backlog that covers several years of production for the most popular aircraft, which gives confidence in aggregate demand for aerospace products. 
Number two, Boeing is well positioned to benefit from emerging market growth in revenue passenger kilometers and a robust developed market replacement cycle over the next few decades. Number three, it's expected that commercial airframe manufacturing will likely remain a duopoly for most of the world for the foreseeable future. Customers may not have many meaningful options other than to continue to rely on incumbent aircraft suppliers. But it wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the negatives of their business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a short thesis, number one, there's potentially substantial operational risk in Boeing's plans to simultaneously ramp up production of the 737 MAX and sell those aircraft in storage as the aviation crisis and supply chain issues unwind. Number two, long-term change consumer behavior, especially among business travelers, could be unfavorable for aviation. Number three, as recent history has provided, aircraft development is notoriously susceptible to development delays, hiccups, and cost overruns. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of their qualitative factors. Now let's give our rating. We learned by analyzing Boeing stock ticker BA, that the company is starting to rebound from the one-two punch combo that they took due to their aviation crisis with their Boeing 737 MAX crashes and a huge reduction to global traffic demand due to the pandemic lockdowns. They didn't fare very well on our analysis as this was looking at probably the most difficult period in the company's history, but there are promising signs that the business is starting to rebound, including positive free cash flows that have grown year over year. Their current free cash flow was just under the risk premium we were looking for. Again, this analysis isn't financial advice. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, based on those assumptions, if you want a 15% rate of return, using today's valuation multiples, if they're the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Boeing's fair value is around $113 per share. The company traded at those levels in the spring of 2020 market crash. When we look at all the factors of our analysis, Boeing looks like an interesting candidate for further research. Be sure to like today's video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about Boeing with me and have a great day.